wrong. So that's what's going on. Hi, I'm Greg Gornert, Vice President and Senior Investment Advisor, Canada Junility Wealth Management and Gornert Wealth Management. And welcome to the channel where we help you make sense out of your financial world. Now, welcome to the second of my unboxing videos. This time, we're going to look at tax-free savings accounts, otherwise known as TFSAs. Now, here's a bit of the background. TFSAs were first introduced in 2009 with an annual contribution limit of $5,000. The annual limit was later increased to $5,500 per year and then increased again to $10,000 per year. Then the political winds changed and the amount was reduced back to $5,500 a year and subsequently increased to $6,000 per year, where it stands now, subject to the whims of our financial overlords. Suffice it to say that the total contribution room for an eligible Canadian, i.e. a Canadian who was 18 in 2009, as of 2021, if you've never contributed, is $75,500. We do like to complicate things in our world. So if you watched my RSP unboxing video, which I'll link here, and I strongly suggest that you do, you'll begin noticing some similarities between TFSAs and its brethren, the RSP. So let's take a closer look. Like an RSP, the main reason to invest in a tax-free savings account is taxes. Now, unlike an RRSP, you cannot deduct your contributions from your earned income to reduce your taxable earnings. However, since you are contributing with after-tax dollars, any future capital gain or investment income is not taxed upon withdrawal. So let's return to our generic Canadian that we talked about so much in my RSP unboxing video, again, earning $100,000 per year. If you have a regular investment savings account, every time you sell a security for profit, you will have to pay capital gains on that profit. Every time you earn income, be it dividend income or interest income, you will have to pay some form of tax on that income. In a tax-free savings account, you don't. All those capital gains and income grow tax-free, which makes a huge difference in your after-tax return. In other words, what you get to keep. Here's another general example, taking our generic Canadian making $100,000 a year and assuming they made an annual capital gain of 10% on an investment in a regular savings account. Yes, it was a very good year. To keep it simple, we'll assume you invested $10,000 and sold it with a 10% gain in the same year, so you paid $10,000, you made a capital gain of $1,000, so you sell your investment for $11,000. Once again, you live in that mythical world where you don't pay any transaction fees, so you made 10% or $1,000. But you'll have to pay capital gains tax. Now, depending on the jurisdiction in Canada that you live, you'll pay anywhere from 17.5% to 22.86% in capital gains tax. So once again, just to keep things simple, let's just assume a capital gains tax of 20%. So... 20% to 10% is 2%, so your after-tax return is only 8%. And that tax drag on your investments only compounds over the years, as your compound growth rate would not be growing at 10%, but at 8%, lessening what no less than Albert Einstein reputedly said was, and again, I'm not making this up, the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest. Had you invested the same funds in a TFSA, you would pay no tax on that gain. Now, as I said earlier, you can withdraw those funds tax-free at any time and reinvest them back into your TFSA the next calendar year. Be careful though, the rules can be somewhat convoluted and have tripped a lot of investors up. So what types of investments are best suited for a TFSA? Well, at first glance, you might assume that you use the same list that I laid out for RSPs, shares of publicly traded companies, mutual funds, ETFs, GICs, and debentures, etc. However, it's a bit more complicated Foreign shares are often best invested outside of a TFSA. You see, within RRSPs and RIFs, dividends on U.S. shares are exempt from withholding taxes. This isn't the case for U.S. shares held within a TFSA. Also, foreign shares from countries outside the U.S. might be best held outside of a TFSA because any foreign withholding tax that is withheld at source cannot be claimed as a foreign tax credit on a personal income tax return. So. As there's no income tax deduction for making a TFSA contribution, there's also no annual deadline for contributions. Just make sure you keep under your limit. So at the end of the day, a TFSA is an incredibly flexible investment vehicle for both long and short-term tax-free growth. And that is a TFSA Unboxed. Be sure to check out my webpage, greggorner.com. See you next time.